<laughs> hey guys, salut, it's Alex. Today, in this episode of Mundus Aromaticus, I will show you a, a way to spice up your dishes in an easy way, the spice blends or spice mix. I think I prefer the word blend. It's more elegant, like a blend than a mix. Is that me being too much French? Never mind. This video is part of a series about spices where we try to understand and classify each and every spice the planet has to offer. So maybe not all of them. At least we'll do cumin. Which one should you have? Where to get them? How to organize them? And what about blends? Welcome to... So spices can help you big time in the kitchen. It's usually faster and safer to use them in the sense that um, it requires less experience and less expertise uh, than using individual spices. Translation, you can less screw up your dishes using spice mixes. So in this video, I'm going to share with you seven essential spice blends from all over the world. Also, I will give you the food that goes well with it. And finally, how to make it from scratch at home. Lebanese za'atar. So in fact, the za'atar spice mix can be found all over the Middle Eastern. But one of my favorite comes from Lebanon. It's usually a sharp spice mix, uh, which is, you know, um, pungent and citrusy and fresh. Zata is perfect for all your dips like hummus, tahini. It's genius when sprinkled over feta cheese or goat cheese. Yet my favorite way to use Zata will always be a pizza dough with nothing but olive oil and Zata. That pizza is simply out of this world and you can trust my words because I'm a pizza guy. The Pizza Odyssey, the series. She, she. You can do it at home using only three tablespoons of dry thyme, two tablespoons of ground sumac, two tablespoons of sesame seeds, a pinch of salt. Indian garam masala. Um, curry powder is just a westernized version of garam masala. If you want the real stuff, so the spice blend garam masala is on the warm side, not on the hot side, on the warm side. Of course, use it on curries, stews, dal or rice. But that spice mix is also surprising and actually spot on on hash browns, cauliflower, popcorns or even gingerbread cookies. So pre-made garam masala is absolutely fine with me, but if you want to go the extra mile, this is how you can make an authentic and simplified version. One tablespoon or two sticks of cinnamon. One tablespoon of cloves, one tablespoon of black peppercorns, one teaspoon of black cardamom pods, or two pods. Of course, you can add fresh stuff like green cardamom, nutmeg, fennel seed, but I think in that case, you would just be diluting the true warm spirit of garam masala. So listen, guys, if you want to emphasize uh, a spice mix personality, it's really important, it's crucial that you keep the ingredient list to a bare minimum, a bare minimum. Otherwise, all your spice blends will just taste the same. Chinese five spice powder. Five spice powder is a classic of uh, Chinese cuisine and it's on the fresh and tangy side. Knowing that, it's great to cut through fatty dishes like pork or duck, but my secret trick is to rub a chicken with it before roasting it. So if you want to make five spice at home, this is how you make it. One star anise, one teaspoon of cloves, one cinnamon stick, one teaspoon of citron peppercorns, one teaspoon of fennel seeds. Moroccan Razel Hanout. Well, in fact, Razel Hanout comes from each country from the north of Africa. And if you want, it's an all around and warming spice mix. Use it to flavor the broth of couscous or to give body to meat, especially strong ones like lamb, sheep, goat, or even game. So the name itself, Razel Hanout, just means 
top shelf. So it's usually a blend, true story, of all the best spices from a spice shop. So in those conditions, I can't share any, you know, authentic Ras Al Hanout recipe, but I can share some of the unusual ingredients you will find in most versions of this spice mix. Rose petals, cubeb pepper, and mace, which is the envelope of nutmeg. So guys, this studio update is a bit special because we need to address a few fails I did in the past. Do you remember the problem on my shelves like this? The color tape, ah, what a fail it was. Well, apparently, you can't peel this one off anymore. Why? It's paint. Beautiful fluorescent paint. And maybe you ask yourself, why does he paint the edges of his shelf? Well, the answer is simple. It's just to give the whole space a color code. Fluorescent orange is the cooking ware. Green is the video gear. No color would be the food space. And the second fail I want to address in this video is this one. Turn. The soap dispenser is back. Ah oh yes, my soap dispenser. Ah! As you can see, it works perfectly well. Finally, in the studio now, you can see yourself. Ta-da! Two big mirrors just above the sink. What do you say? Okay, I guess it's fine. You look scruffy too, so just don't. And that is the end of the studio update. Back to the video. French four spices or quatre épices. So let's face it, French cuisine is big on sauces and butter and cream and things, but spices is not so much a French thing. However, four spices can be found in most French kitchen. Use it to give body to broth made with beef, chicken or just vegetables. It's also an essential component of any stuffing or charcuterie like terrines and pâté. You want to make it at home? Fine, it's easy. Just mix in equal proportions cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg and black pepper. Mexican adobo. So in fact, adobo spice mix can be found in many places all over the world, like Spain, Philippines, or all over Latin America. It brings a complex heat to your dishes. Use that spice mix with confidence on fajitas, tacos, ground beef, roasted potatoes, tomato sauce, or even a dash on guacamole. So as always, pre-made adobo spice mix is just fine. It's fine. But if you want more control, if you want a, you know, a fine tuning, then you can do it at home using only one tablespoon oregano, one tablespoon cumin, one teaspoon garlic, one tablespoon onions, one teaspoon chili flakes. So here's a quick word from me uh, while currently editing this video. Please guys, do not freak out. I know dried herbs should be kept out of the spice world just by definition. But in this video, I used thyme in the za'atar and also I used oregano in the adobo spice mix. You know what? I think that law is rubbish. I think this is bullshit. Dried herbs should be included in the spice world. What do you say? Tell me in the comments. Japanese shichimi. So its full name is shichimi togarashi and it literally translates into seven flavors chili pepper. Also, of course, there is heat into that spice mix, but it's mostly famous for its tang and also for its tickling. Shichimi is perfect to flavor udon, wheat noodles, soba, buckwheat noodles, or any kind of ramen noodle soup. My favorite use is in fact to sprinkle it over silky tofu. So would you want to make it by yourself? That is not that easy in fact, because uh, a few of those ingredients in it are a bit tricky to find and the others are, let's say, um, illegal. Yeah, that's true, illegal. Now you're hooked, you want to know. Okay, I'm not the police, so I don't care. One tablespoon chili flakes. One teaspoon sancho pepper or Sichuan pepper. 1 teaspoon orange or mandarin zest, 1 teaspoon seaweed, 1 tablespoon sesame, 
one teaspoon ginger, and one teaspoon hemp seed. Hemp. Hemp. Weed. I believe those seven spice blends are great alternative to using individual spices. And also, if you keep them in clean and cool, dark and dry places, they will keep for months. Well, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, then give it a like, thumbs up and share that over. Spread it like butter on your social media. Also, very important, leave me a comment down below with your favorite spice mix. It's interesting for the community and also on what food you're using it. It's very important that you keep experimenting, keep trying new spice and food combinations. Don't be trapped by the examples I just gave you. And if it works, then you have to thank me. But if it doesn't, I don't want to hear about you, okay? Bon, salut, bye bye.